So I've entitled the message today, Death Talk, Sustained by Glory, um, because Jesus is about to face the cross, go down for the final leg of the journey. He'll be sustained by glory, but first of all, he speaks plainly about his death, and that's in a passage just prior to this one about the transfiguration. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. And he said this plainly. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessing this day as we contemplate the importance of being able to speak plainly about death, to speak plainly about our own death, about being able to speak plainly about the Lord Jesus' death. We are sustained in all of this talk. We're sustained by the visions of glory. For we know our final goal. We know our true home. May we be sustained as our Lord and the disciples were sustained. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Well, if the words, London Bridge is down, a plan decades in the making, was set in motion because Queen Elizabeth had died. And for the continuance of government, the plans had to be immediately executed. Executing a plan had to be implemented quickly and effectively, or there could be a constitutional crisis, perhaps, or a falling of financial markets, or, or worse. Even in the United States, when a president leaves office through death or after an election, everyone hopes that there be cooperation or there's a risk of similar kinds of instability. It doesn't matter if a nation has had hundreds of years of smooth succession. It can all go by the boards in a matter of hours. If earthly kingdoms know the importance of preparing for their monarch's death. How much more does the kingdom of God, the king of kings, he did not keep quiet about his death to his disciples. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. The king of kings did not keep quiet about his death of his followers. He spoke plainly, because that's what he came into this world to accomplish. That's what the law of Moses and Elijah, representing all the prophets, were focused on. They were focused in on the sacrifice who would take away the sins of the world. From Genesis to Malachi, the whole of salvation history is focused on this singular mission of the Messiah, to provide an atoning death for our sins. Earthly monarchs and their realms, they don't really embrace death. They cope with it when that eventuality comes. But for Jesus, his death was not an eventuality, an unavoidable experience of the flesh. The one who would raise Lazarus from the dead, declaring, I am the resurrection and the life, would not be forced to die. Jesus is the only human being for whom life and death was truly a choice. Jesus claimed convincingly, I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to raise myself up again. And thanks be to God, though, that he willingly 
He willingly laid his life down. And thanks be to God that he willingly raised it up. He willingly turned the other cheek. He willingly shed blood and tears and he endured the cross. Death was truly an active work that he embraced and he accomplished, yielding great things and benefits for us all. Transfiguration points to the accomplishment of the king's death. The accomplishment of the king's death is resurrection for us all. The accomplishment is glory for all. And what these disciples saw before them, eternal life and glory as the evangelist preached, he was transfigured before them and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, more white than anyone could ever bleach them. And if Moses and Elijah were seen there, they were talking with Jesus. They were alive. They were recognizable to the disciples and they reflected the very glory of the Lord. Jesus' willingness to die and by an act of will to rise again may have still been chronologically in the future while they were standing on that mountain peak. But his death and resurrection was so certain that the effects of his life, death, and resurrection, it kind of broke the time barrier that day. And the effects of his work were already being manifested in the lives of Moses and Elijah, who were appearing there very much alive. They were alive in glory. They are awaiting with the rest of us the resurrection of their bodies, but nevertheless, they were very much alive and with Jesus. This vision of heavenly glory, there was a great purpose to it, a purpose that we want to keep forefront in our minds throughout the Lenten season. The purpose is to sustain our Lord, to sustain the disciples, and also us as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Look carefully and listen carefully during the Lenten season as we focus in on the cross and all of the associated sufferings that our Lord experiences. And we'll note and we'll mark and we'll inwardly digest the extent of his sufferings his abandonment by the Father in darkness, betrayal by a friend, suffering injustice at the hands of those who prided themselves in giving justice. But then we'll certainly hold before our eyes what sustains Jesus through it all. It's this glimpse of glory on top of the mountain the essence of the triune God is being manifested there and radiating forth. The motivational power of the transfiguration will sustain us also through the Lenten season, live a gradual reminding us of the joy of the season, and we'll have a chance throughout the Lenten season to sing Hebrews chapter 12. We're, we're invited, O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder, perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, the joy that was set before him was on that holy mountain, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he's seated at the right hand of God on a throne in glory. But Elijah, he did what many of us do. He didn't want to talk about death. He didn't want to talk about his master's exodus. The sons of the prophets came to him, not once but twice, and they were saying to him, Do you not know that your master Elijah will be taken from you? But each time Elisha replied, and I kind of imagine him 
as he's replying, maybe kind of sheepishly looking down at the ground as he says it, yes, I know, keep quiet. I think that he, he turned into a plain talker concerning death after that, for his master Elijah was a plain talker concerning death. We know that he and Moses were talking to Jesus about his exodus, about his death, and what glories await us there. Elijah could have easily recounted his, his experiences. You know, maybe he could have sung the song even before it was penned. Swing low, sweet chariot, come for to carry me home. A band of angels is coming for me, come for to carry me home. And not just angels, but the fiery horses. And I love to consider that story of Elijah, accompanied by the wonderful illustration of the fiery horses. Hold the vision of angels and the fiery chariots that come for to carry you home as you bear the cross. Moses likewise had his song of God's triumph, of God's chariots, going before him, going before his people into the promised land, really a prophecy of our entrance into a heavenly Canaan and the true promised land. I think of Psalm 68, the chariots of God are twice 10,000, thousands upon thousands, and the Lord is among them. Sinai is now his sanctuary. You ascended on high, leading a host of captives in your train, and receiving gifts among men, even among the rebellious, that the Lord God may dwell there. Yes, Moses also could hold forth visions to Jesus, visions of glory, even as they basked in them on the mountain. So must the disciples follow, and so must we follow. We're likewise sustained in the cross-bearing life, keeping focused in on Jesus, keeping focused in on our ultimate heavenly home, knowing His glory, even as we sing of it. And we're going to be singing of it as we um, celebrate the sacrament this day. We're going to be singing Jerusalem the Golden. Oh, know not, oh, how we know not, what joys await us there, the radiancy of glory and the bliss beyond compare. So my friends, do not fear to speak of death, either your own death or the death of the Messiah, for past death is a wondrous glory. Speak plainly about death, but even more plainly and passionately about our future glory. May this message enlighten our hearts and minds this Transfiguration Sunday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise.